Bruce Lee has been a cult martial arts icon in cinema and a key figure of modern popular media since the 1970s. I'm pretty sure that if you clicked on this video, you'd know who Bruce Lee is, at least to some degree. For me, he was more than just a martial arts actor, but more so the single figure that managed to break martial arts film into the mainstream Northern American and European cinema. Because of his success, the influence of East Asian martial arts cinema can be seen in so many other movie genres, including comedies, action, drama, science fiction, horror, and so many more. And guess what? They all have their roots in the popularity that was Bruce Lee. On top of being an action star, he was the founder of Jeet Kune Do, which is a hybrid martial arts philosophy drawing from different combat disciplines that is often credited with paving the way of modern mixed martial arts, or MMA. He is the number one force credited with helping to change the way Asians were presented in American cinema. Throughout his career, he is mostly noted for his roles in five feature-length martial arts films in the early 1970s, but there is so much more to Bruce Lee and his rise to icon status. With that being said, who is Bruce Lee? Bruce Lee's Chinese name is Li Jun Fan, and he was born on November 27, 1940, and he died on July 20, 1973, at the young age of 32. He is the son of a Cantonese opera star and was born in the Chinatown area of San Francisco to parents from Hong Kong, and was raised with his family in Kowloon, Hong Kong. He was introduced to the film industry by his father and appeared in several films as a child actor. As a nine-year-old, he would co-star with his father and the kid in 1950, which was based on a comic book character and was his first leading role. By the time he was 18, he had appeared in 20 films. During his childhood, Lee was involved in several street fights, so his parents decided that he needed to be trained in the martial arts. Lee's friend William Chung introduced him to Ip Man, but he was rejected from learning Wing Chun Kung Fu under him because of the long-standing rule in the Chinese martial arts world to not teach foreigners. His one-quarter German background from his mother's side would be an initial obstacle towards his Wing Chun training. However, Chung would speak on his behalf and Li was accepted into the school. Lee moved to the United States at the age of 18 to receive his higher education at the University of Washington in Seattle, and it was during this time that he began teaching martial arts. He did drop out of college in early 1964 and moved to Oakland to live with James Yim Lee. Together they founded the second Jun Fan Martial Arts Studio in Oakland. James Lee was also responsible for introducing Bruce Lee to Ed Park, an American martial artist. At the invitation of Parker, Lee appeared in the 1964 Long Beach International Karate Championship and performed repetitions of two finger push ups with feet at approximately shoulder width apart. In the same Long Beach event, he also performed his famous one inch punch, which involved extending one's arm approximately one inch away from the partner's chest, and without retracting the arm, a forcible punch is delivered. At the 1964 championship, Lee first met Taekwondo master Ju Gu Ri. The two developed a friendship which they benefited as martial artists. Ri taught Lee the sidekick in detail, which is another one of his trademarks, and Lee taught Ri the non-telegraphic punch. In the mid-1960s, Lee had abandoned thoughts of a film career in favor of pursuing martial arts. However, martial arts exhibition in Long Beach in 1964 eventually led to the invitation by television producer William Dozier for an audition for a role in the pilot for Number One Son about Lee Chan, the son of Charlie Chan. The show never materialized, but Dozier saw potential in Lee. This led him to getting the role of Cato in the series The Green Hornet based on the radio show by the same name. The series tells the story of a playboy bachelor and media mogul, Britt Reed, who is the owner and publisher of the Daily Sentinel newspaper. Secretly, he puts on a mask and costume to fight crime with his martial arts expert partner, Cato. 
Throughout the show, the Green Hornet is a wanted criminal, but in reality, he is masquerading as a criminal so that he can infiltrate and battle criminal gangs, leaving them and the uh, incriminating evidence for police arrival. The show lasted only one season of 26 episodes from 1966 to 1967. This show was controversial at the time, as it was the first popular American show presenting Asian-style martial arts. After the show was cancelled in 1967, Lee wrote to Dozier thanking him for starting his career in show business. Jeet Kune Do originated in 1967 after finding himself jobless due to the Green Hornet's cancellation. That year, he opened the Jun Fang Kung Fu Institute. The controversial match with Wan Jack Man influenced his philosophy about martial arts. He felt that it lasted too long and that traditional martial arts didn't work for chaotic street fighting. Lee decided to develop a system with an emphasis on practicality, flexibility, speed, and efficiency. He called this type of fighting the style of no style. This consisted of getting rid of the formalized approach which Lee claimed was indicative of traditional styles. In 1969, Lee made a brief appearance in the film Marlowe where he played a hoodlum hired to intimidate private detective Philip Marlowe, played by James Garner, who uses his martial arts abilities to commit acts of vandalism to intimidate Marlowe. In 1971, Lee appeared in four episodes of the television series Longstreet, where he played Ti Tsung, the martial arts instructor of the title character. It is during that time that Lee pitched a television series of his own tentatively entitled The Warrior. Both Paramount and Warner Brothers wanted him to be in a modernized type of a thing that they think the Western idea is out, whereas I wanted to do the Western, but Lee's concept was retooled and renamed Kung Fu. But Warner Brothers gave Lee no credit. The role of the Shaolin monk in the Wild West was eventually awarded to the non-martial artist David Carradine. In the Pierre Burton Show interview, Lee stated that he understood Warner Brothers' attitude towards casting in the series. They think that business-wise, it is a risk. I don't blame them. If the situation was reversed and an American star was to come to Hong Kong and I was the man with the money, I would have my own concerns as to whether the acceptance would be there. Also in 1971, Lee played his first leading role in The Big Boss, which proved to be an enormous box office success across Asia and catapulted him to stardom. Cheng is a city boy who moves with his cousins to work at a nice factory. He does this with a family promise never to get involved in any fight. However, when members of his family begin disappearing after meeting the management of the factory, the resulting mystery and pressures force him to break that vow and take on the villainy of the big boss. Unlike most martial arts movies of the time, the film was set in the present day and attempted things like characterizations and even realism. Even more daringly, the film has less fighting, with the fights being structured around the plot rather than the other way around, and bravest of all, the star of the film does not go into action until halfway through. Despite its flaws, the big boss does have an odd power, especially towards the end. Lee's character is an anti-hero who for a while badly strays from goodness, and there is a sense that killing all the bad guys will not bring him redemption. In 1972, Bruce Lee followed up with Fist of Fury, which broke the box office record set previously by the big boss. As for Fist of Fury, it tells the story of Chen Zhen, played by Bruce Lee. Having left his homeland of China and relocating to stay with family in Thailand, Chen swears to his mother that he would avoid violence. Returning to Shanghai, Chen Zhen, a student of renowned martial arts teacher Hua Yuanjia, discovers that his Sifu has died. During the funeral, members of a local Japanese dojo show up and insult the Chinese students. Having made that promise to his mother about avoiding violence in his new life and even wearing a necklace to remind him of this oath, he keeps avoiding confrontations. When he finds out that the factory he works at is a cover for a drug ring and his family members are murdered by members of the gang, he cannot avoid fighting anymore and decides to confront his corrupt boss. Having finished his initial two-year contract, Lee negotiated a new deal with Golden Harvest. Lee later formed his own company, Concord Production Inc., with Raymond Chow, who was the founder of Golden Harvest, and he was responsible for successfully launching martial arts and the Hong Kong cinema onto the international stage. For his third film, Way of the Dragon, which was released in 1972, Bruce Lee was given complete control of the film's production as the writer, director, star, and choreographer of the fight scenes. 
This movie tells the story of Tang Long, played by Lee, who arrives in Rome to help his cousins in the restaurant business. They are being pressured to sell their property to the syndicate who will stop at nothing to get what they want. When Tang arrives, he poses a new threat to the syndicate and they are unable to defeat him. The syndicate boss hires the best Japanese and European martial arts to fight Tang, but he easily finishes them off. The American martial artist, Colt played by Chuck Norris, is hired and has a showdown with Tang in Rome's famous Colosseum. Chuck Norris was cast in this movie which also jump-started his own acting career. After Lee and Chuck met at the demonstration in Long Beach, California in 1972, Lee also started to work on his fourth film, Game of Death. He began filming some scenes including his fight sequence with 7 foot 2 inches tall American basketball star Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, a former student of his. Production stopped when Warner Brothers offered Lee the opportunity to star in Enter the Dragon. This was the first one to be produced jointly by Concord, Golden Harvest and Warner Brothers. Filming began in Hong Kong in February 1973 and was completed in April 1973. The story revolves around Lee who is recruited by a secretive intelligence group to infiltrate an island owned by the master criminal Han, who appears publicly only at martial arts tournaments. Han learned his martial arts skills at the same monastery as Lee, who has been invited to the tournament as well. When Lee learns that it was Han's men who were responsible for his sister's death, he sets out for revenge. Other participants in the tournament include American Roper and Williams who were in the army together. They all soon realize that Han uses the tournament to recruit new associates, and those who refuse are killed. However, only a few months after the completion of Enter the Dragon, and six days before its July 26, 1973 release, Lee died. Enter the Dragon would go on to become one of the year's highest grossing films and cemented Lee as a martial arts legend. Because of his death, the movie The Game of Death remained an incomplete movie for many years but was eventually released in 1978 using over 100 minutes of footage that was shot prior to his death. For this to work, most of Lee's story was scrapped and replaced with an entirely new one. This process was done in a variety of ways. One thing they did was cast actors who could pose as stand-ins for Lee. Although the pagoda used in the movie was supposed to have five floors, Complete scenes were only shot for three of the floors, the Temple of the Tiger where Lee faced Inosanto, the Temple of the Dragon where he fought Jihan Jae, and the final floor known as the Temple of the Unknown where he fought Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. The goal of the film's plot was to showcase Lee's beliefs regarding the principles of martial arts. As each martial artist is defeated, the flaws in their fighting styles are revealed. And even though Bruce Lee died at a young age, Jeet Kune Do is often credited with paving the way for modern mixed martial arts. Lee is considered by commentators, critics, media and other martial artists to be the most influential martial artist of all time and a pop culture icon of the 20th century. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this tribute to Bruce Lee and that this video maybe gave some of you a bit more insight into the person who bridged the gap between East and West. Please be sure to subscribe and hit the like button. Leave me a comment too if you'd like to share something about Bruce Lee. Have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next video.